Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Moments of Encounter. Uh, this is Father Michael Irwin from St. Catherine Drexel Parish in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, as well as the Tri Parishes in Kleiman, Reesville, and Elba. It's my honor to be able to open up the scriptures this morning for you on this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday, we call it. So it's an opportunity for us to think about the Good Shepherd. And it's a good weekend for us to do that. Um, this, we had a lot to pray over this week with so much drama in our country again and um, that really big uh, decision by the jury up in Minneapolis. It's kind of a time for us to be able to keep praying, keep learning, and allow ourselves with all humility to get instructed by Christ, the Good Shepherd. So let us open up our hearts just for that. Loving God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit on us in this Easter season. And in seeing Jesus Christ risen from the dead, we believe all th- we believe all things are possible. And seeing the glow of the Paschal candle, we realize that th- he is the light that uh, is able to dispel all darkness. Help our darkness in our world and in our country and our hearts to be dispelled by the light of Christ. Open up our minds to be able today. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First, I want to go over the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 8. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, nay, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected as the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, So, one of the great philosophers of all time, uh, in my humble attention opinion, um, realized that one of the most important aspects of who we are as human beings is that we care. Uh, That there's a part of ourselves that really care. We sometimes care. We know that caring tends to break our hearts. We tend to get manipulated by caring too much, and so we kind of wish we didn't care. But really. That's the whole point of who we are as, as human beings, is that kind of person who is able to care. But we realize we can get attacked as we do so. As we do so. It's like we open up our hearts and we end up getting vulnerable. So this story today of, of being able to, of Jesus getting hurt when he is trying to be kind to people and Peter being hurt because he's being kind to people is kind of the normal, the normal human story. But hopefully we can appreciate that what else is there? What else is the cornerstone other than love? And of course, Jesus, because he is the Christ, because he is the Son of God, is a purity of that love. And as we're going to hear in our gospel reading, willing to give up his life for us because he loves people so profoundly. Um, but we can end up getting injured when we end up taking care of somebody else. And so we want to be able to pray for people, especially, who are, might feel kind of abused and beaten up, so that they don't lose their sense of priority and their sense of you know, being having some eyes, and allow themselves to realize that is the cornerstone. The cornerstone is being willing to love, and so Jesus Christ is that cornerstone. And cornerstones are going to get rejected, but that doesn't change the reality. They are the cornerstones. And so Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. This is the gospel reading that connects to that. Gospel of John, chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A haired man who's not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep 
other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. Me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this week, of course, the drama up in Minneapolis was such that we've seen, um, and it's not over. I mean, this is going to be something we continue to talk about for a long time. But really, it's very passionate time. But really, it's very passionate people trying to do their best to be able to care for those who are vulnerable. And in so doing, they find themselves colliding with other folks as well. And we see two sides of this. Um, um, I see on one side the police officers. You know, your average police officer gets into the work because they really do actually care. For a while, I was an EMT on a fire department for eight years. And, of course, EMTs, firefighters, police officers have to work shoulder to shoulder. And while I was doing that, while I was doing that ministry, was doing that work, I came to realize so many of these people are just like social workers on testosterone or, or, and of course, if they're women, maybe, you know, slightly different physiological balance there. But the same point, which is they're strong and they're tough, but they do actually and care so much that they're willing to risk their lives in caring. And it's sometimes really hard to explain to others, even sometimes the people they love, who wish they wouldn't be in such a high-risk situation over and over again. Uh, but they really do care, and they're willing to lay down their li- lay down their lives in order to help those who are vulnerable, uh, especially to somebody who is willing to be on the attack. So we think of that from the police side. But then we also see that from people who are trying to do some community organizing, who see some segments uh, repeatedly injured and they just feel like it's important to interject themselves into the whole thing. I was also on that side of it, too. I found myself wanting to help in the central city of Milwaukee at one, one point, and to the point of getting involved with direct care, handing out food to people who were in need of assistance, but also in advocacy work. And there, too, I could see how one had to risk their own lives. One time I was on a St. Vincent de Paul call in the inner city, and I could hear a bullet whizzing by, and I thought, oh, Lordy, what am I in the middle of here? Um, but it was kind of the work I wanted to do, the work I wanted to do. Or people who are trying to interject themselves in what they see as a major injustice, injustices that hurt other people, and they know in you know, stepping out there and saying these things in order to challenge a system uh, they know that people are going to label that people are going to label them, maybe exclude them, maybe kick them out of their town, or maybe even physically harm them. And sometimes I'll even get that experience when I'm preaching. If I'm bringing up an unpopular subject, but a subject that's important to the church, um, I know that I might be excluded from some circles, angry and hurt me in some way or another. So you never can tell on both sides. When you get out there trying to assist people, and believe it or not, it's kind of on both sides. It's on both sides, the police and the people who are working for social change. Um, they're trying to help the, vul- help the vulnerable. They're um, taking physical risks to themselves and to their well-being of their family and doing so with great passion. And what we've seen happening this week is those two things kind of colliding with each other. Much to pray over, so much drama here. 
But hopefully, but hopefully we can find that we can bring Jesus Christ into the middle of it all. That Jesus Christ is, in fact, that good shepherd who ultimately lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus is purely innocent. You know, he's truly advocating for justice. He is purely uh, interjecting himself between the powerful and the meek. But he's also recognizing the sins of the world and interjecting himself between the sins of the world and other people. Jesus puts himself into that position, and he's killed for that. that. But he does so because he genuinely cares. He is the cornerstone, willing to put himself out there to make these things happen. And therefore, hopefully, we can see within Jesus Christ the cornerstone, the one who perhaps can help us to get back into dialogue. Because the whole point of this thing isn't to uh, sacrifice our life. The whole point of this is to, with passion, look after the vulnerable and hopefully appreciate that risk-taking uh, in all sides of the thing. Now, I don't mean to come across as wishy-washy and not taking us, but in all honesty, I think I am taking a side here where it is about understanding that there's a lot of good people trying to do a lot of things, but all of us are doing so with sin in our hearts, with imperfection in our hearts. And and so we're called of humility in what we do and let Jesus Christ who is truly the good shepherd, have a priority over each one of us so that even though we have to, are called to do something bold and called to take on some risks, we do so curiously with Jesus. We do so curiously with Jesus Christ above us as the one all of us could still learn from and to, in that case, receive redemption from him receive love from him, and from that perspective, enter into dialogue with each other. There is hope for us. Hopefully, people keep having that hope. You know, hopefully, you guys, you know, we can be able to not get through a week where we feel like we're on the losing side of things and then stop trying anymore. We're doing so because we have faith, faith that God takes care of us that he did not send us into the world to be miserable, and he didn't send us into the world that somebody would get lost, but rather we can include everybody on the journey if at all possible. And then we realize, therefore, Jesus Christ in the middle of us. And so let us pray. Loving God, send your blessings upon our world and upon our country and upon our lively discussions. Help us to, in all humility, continue on in pursuing justice and caring for the vulnerable, even if it means taking on risks and risks. And hopefully we can appreciate, help us to appreciate, Lord, people on the other side who are taking on similar risks, trying to do something similar, maybe seeing things from a different perspective. Help us to appreciate one another when we care because we appreciate Jesus Christ, who is our cornerstone, a cornerstone because he laid down his life for his sheep. And may he bless us in this journey. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Well, may God continue to bless you. Keep in prayer our confirmation candidates this week who are getting confirmed on Tuesday evening. And let the Holy Spirit flow. God bless you and keep you to then. Again, my Father Michael Irwin at St. Catherine Drexel in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Holding them carefully close to his heart